Okay, welcome back to Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. Um, I'm answering upon the request of one of my students a question from the June 2013, um, the old GCE Core Mathematics C2 paper. Um, this question is question number three, which is corresponding to um, like a P2 paper now, factor theorem, and um, also some other exponential equation, part B or part C, sorry. Um, so he's actually asking about part C, but I'm going to go through the whole question just for completeness sake. So question three, part A, it says f of x equals 2x cubed minus 5x squared plus ax plus 18, where a is a constant. Given that x minus 3 is a factor of f of x, show that a equals negative 9. Okay, so when something is a factor of a polynomial like this, you have a linear factor of a polynomial, then basically whatever makes that factor become zero, okay, any value of x that makes that factor become zero will also make the whole polynomial zero also if x minus 3, if that, that factor is a factor of f of x. So what makes x minus 3 zero? Well, x minus 3 becomes zero when x equals 3. So if I substitute x equals 3 into this function, then, and x minus 3 is definitely a factor, then this will definitely give me 0. So as x minus 3 is a factor, is a factor of f of x, therefore we can say f3 is going to be equal to 0. Simple as that. So f3 is 2 times 3 cubed minus 5 times 3 squared plus a times 3 plus 18. And all of that will definitely equal 0 because they told us x minus 3 is definitely a factor. So this is 2 times 27, which is 54, minus 5 times 9, which is 45 plus 3 times a, which is 3, 3a, plus 18 is equal to 0. So you have 55 minus, sorry, 54 minus 45, which is 9, 9 plus 18, which is 27. So you have 3a plus 27 is equal to 0. So we can say a is equal to negative 27, um, sorry, 3a is equal to negative 27, so a equals negative 27 over 3, which is negative 9, which is what we had to show. Okay, so we had to show that a equals negative 9, and there's the answer for part a. Okay, so then it says factorize part b, factorize f of x completely. Now, f of x is going to be this, and we know that a is negative 9 now, um, which even if you couldn't show part a, you would know that a is negative 9. So you could go on to part d without even understanding how to do part a, you could go in and try to do part B. Okay, so that's one thing that you should learn from these exams. Sometimes they give you a value, they show something, and you can use the value they gave you in, in subsequent parts of the question, even if you didn't know how to show that thing. And don't just say, oh, I can't do part A, so I'm going to give up the whole question. You'll lose lots of marks that way unnecessarily. So anyway, f of x is 2x cubed. So f of x is now 2x cubed. What was it again? 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 9x and plus 18. Okay, that's now the function f of x. And we know that x minus 3 is a factor. x minus 3 is a factor. Now, to find other factors, there are very, various methods you can use. But most probably, the, the simplest one to use here would be to do long division. Okay, long division, algebraic long division. There's other methods of doing long division as well. But I'll just stick to the traditional one. 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 9x plus 18. You have to do make sure when you do long division that there's nothing missing. You've got x cubed, x squared, x constant. There's no you know, terms missing. For example, if there was no x squared term, I'd have to put plus 0x squared in this place. But everything is there, so that's fine. Make sure they're in order, going from highest to lowest, descending order uh, in terms of their powers, and then you're fine. So now you say to yourself, okay, x 
times what gives me 2x cubed? Right, well, that's 2x squared. x times 2x squared gives me 2x cubed. Then I multiply 2x squared with both of these terms. That gives me 2x cubed minus 6x squared. Everything falls in, in, the, in line with each other here. Then I've got to subtract these two, these two lines. <clears throat> of course, this gives me 0. If it didn't, that means I've got the wrong number right there. This will, the first one will always have to become 0. But the next one um, is going to be minus 5x squared plus 6x squared, which is x squared. Okay, minus, minus, plus. Bring down the next number. x times x is x squared, so I'm going to put plus x. Then x times x minus 3 is x squared minus 3x. And again, I've got to subtract these two. And when I subtract them, of course, this will just become 0, as it should. And this is minus 9x plus 3x, which is six minus 6x. Bring down the next number, which is 18. x goes into minus 6x minus 6 times. You end up with minus 6x plus 18. Of course, there should be no remainder. Okay, if there's a remainder, there's something wrong. Because if x minus 3 is a factor, then it goes into this you know, a certain whole number of times with no remainder. So I know that f of x now can be expressed as x minus 3 times 2x squared plus x minus 6. So now I have to factorize this completely. So I have to factorize this last term. Okay, we can do this in a numerous ways, but probably the easiest way of doing this now is to um, split the middle term or to use our little kind of grid method, which I like to use. So I'm going to factorize this, this by saying, OK, I'm going to put the 2x squared up here and the minus 6 down here. Two numbers multiplied to give me minus 12x squared, but when I add them, I get plus 1x. Well, that's 4x and minus 3x. They give me negative 12x squared, and when I add them, I get 1x. That's the right combination there. So then I can take out the common factor from these two terms and write it in front of the row. That's going to be just x. Then I say x times this gives me 2x squared, and that's 2x. x times minus 3 gives me minus 3x, and 2x times plus 2 gives me 4x. So this now becomes x minus 3 times x plus 2 times 2x minus 3. So this is factorized now completely. And there's the answer to part B. Okay, it's completely factorized into three linear factors. Okay, so there's the answer to part B of this question. Now I'm going to move on to part C. Okay, so for part C, it says, given that g of y is equal to 2 times 3 to the power of 3y minus 5 times 3 to the power of 2y minus 9 times 3y plus 3 to the power of y plus 18. Find the values of y that satisfy g of y equals 0, giving your answers to two decimal places where appropriate. Now, if we take this function here, g of y, and um, we rewrite it, because we got here 3 to the power of 3y. If you think about 3 to the power of 3y, this is like 3 to the power of 3 to the power of y, right? Because when you multiply these two powers, you end up with, you know, this. Okay, when you raise something to a, from, if you raise something, okay, um, a power to another power, you multiply the powers. So you could also think of this as 3 to the power of y or cubed. That's also going to give you 3, 3 to the power of 3y. This is probably the most simple, the, 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 the more appropriate way of thinking about this in trying to solve this problem. So I can rewrite this as g y equals g of y equals 2 times 3 to the power of y cubed. And I know that 3 to the power of 2y can be also in the same way be written as 3 to the power of y squared. So I've got minus 5 times 3 to the power of y squared and minus 9 times 3 to the power of y plus 18. Now solving this, you've got a it's like you've got a cubic equation. Right? And you've got something 2 times something cubed minus 5 times something squared minus 9 times that same thing 
plus 18. So what you should realize very quickly is that there's some sort of link between this and the equation that we saw in part A. Normally they might say hence or something, but they didn't say that here. But you should very quickly realize that this actually, if you look at part A, it's f of x equals 2x cubed. This is like 2 times something cubed. Minus 5x squared, and this is minus 5 times something squared, the same thing squared. Minus, and remember this A was minus 9, this is minus 9x. So it's minus 9 times that same thing, plus 18. So <clears throat> if I say let x equals 3 to the power of y, then I'll end up with the same um, you know, equation. If I just replace the x with 3 to the power of y, I'll end up okay, with this equation here. Because replacing the x with 3y will give me, um, 3, 3 to the power of y with x will give me 2x cubed, and minus 5x squared, and minus 9 times 3 to the power of y plus 18. So I'll end up with 2 times um, x cubed minus 5 times x squared minus 9 times x plus 18. And we've got to solve the equation with that equals 0. Now, the other thing we've already done the work for this, because we've already factorized this okay, in the first uh, question part B. We factorized it. So I can rewrite this as a product of factors x minus 3 times x plus 2 times 2x minus 3 equals 0. And now I can say, ah, okay, if I want to solve this, either x equals 3 or x equals minus 2 or x equals minus or plus 3 over 2. Right? So now we know x is equal to 3 to the power of y. We want to solve it for y here. Okay, so we've got to find the values of y. So we've got 3 to the power of y is either 3, or 3 to the power of y is negative 2, or 3 to the power of y is 3 over 2. Now, 3 to the power of y equals 3, of course, we know. That's like an exponential equation. y is equal to 1. So that's one solution. 3 to the power of y equals negative 2, well, that, that can never happen. Okay, 3 to the power of y can never be negative. Um, so that's going to be no solution to that. No solution. But here we can, to solve this, this is like, you can't make the bases the same like we could here. So what we can do is we can use logarithms. So I can take um, log to the base 3 of both sides. So end up with y equals log to the base 3 of 3 over 2. Okay, log to the base 3 of 3 over 2. So y is going to equal, now you can take your calculator, and you can use this button here, log to the base 3, and you've got 3 over 2. Okay, and that gives you answer, 0 0.36907, 0 0.36907, was that right? Yep. Yeah. And the questions in the question it says give your answer to two decimal places where appropriate. So this is going to be y equals 0 0.37 to two decimal places. And here we have the two solutions. So you have y equals 1 and y equals 0 0.37. And there we have solved this question, part C, and we've solved the whole paper. Oh well, not the whole paper, the whole of this question, part question number three. Okay, so there's um, the answer. Um, I hope that was understood. Thank you very much for watching. Other questions from this paper, when I, if I get around to doing them, will be found in the playlist that should appear somewhere over here. Other questions about the factor theorem can be found um, in this playlist. And other questions about exponentials and logarithms can be found in the playlist that should be appearing somewhere over here. You can click on, my uh, click on this to, to subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and see you soon.